sphere A collides with sphere B as shown in the figure. If the coefficient of restitution is 0 0.5, determine the x and y components of the velocity of each sphere immediately after impact, and motion is confined to the xy plane. All right. So, for this question, we're looking at an impact, um, and just by looking at it, you can see that it's going to be an oblique impact rather than a, a direct central impact. So if you have a direct central impact, both of these um, vectors would need to be like in line with each other so that the centers of the ball um, collide in line. But for this one, you can see that they're like offset slightly. So it's going to be the oblique case. So for this one, it's important to identify the normal and the tangential direction. So the tangential direction goes tangent to where the balls contact. So I'm going to call this T. And the normal direction is 90 degrees to that. So I'm going to draw it out this way. And it's going to be in line with that dotted line. All right. That's already given to us in the figure. So that's our N and T directions. So it's an impact. We're going to be um, using um, the velocity in the N and T direction separately um, when we get to substituting into our momentum equations. So what I'm going to do first up is just simplify uh, each of the velocities down um, into their normal and tangential component. So if we start with A here, the normal component is going to be the one in line with this axis here, and it's going to be pointing in the positive end direction. Um, so it's going to become positive 3, and it's going to be the uh, cos component. So 3 cos 45. All right, so now for the uh, T component, all right, it's going to be in line with this axis here. So it's going to be the sine component of this vector. So 3 sine 45, and it's pointing also in the positive T direction. So it's positive over here as well. So now looking at VB in both of the directions. So the normal part is going to be pointing in the negative N direction. So it's going to be a negative. And we've got a 30 degree angle um, in between our vector and that n axis. So it's going to be negative 12 cos 40, uh, sorry, 30. And for the tangential component, it's also going to be pointing down in terms of that t um, direction. So it's going to be a negative, And this time it's going to be the sine component. So negative 12 sine 30. All right. So... The other piece of information that's going to be very important is this coefficient of restitution, which is 0 0.5. And we're going to end up applying that coefficient of restitution equation in the n direction um, to be able to solve. So all we're looking for is the final velocities of these spheres after impact. Um, we're going to get them first in the n and the t directions, and then we'll be able to convert them at the end into that x and the y direction. And that would just be an um, axis conversion. So let's start off with looking at system momentum um, in the end direction because we know it's going to be conserved. All right, so our equation is one here. Oops, needs an n in there. So I guess I should probably note down here for when we substitute in, we know the masses of our two different ones. So the mass of A is 10 kilograms and the mass of B is 2. All right, so we've listed out all of our different variables, so we should be able to sub directly into this equation. So let me do that. VAN dash and v BN dash are the two variables that we're trying to find. So I'm just going to leave them as the unknowns. And what we can do is simplify down the left hand side um, into one number. 
and that number is 0 0.429 approximately. So you can see that we have two unknowns in this equation, so we're not going to be able to solve it directly at this point. So the next step is to get that second equation well, to help us solve simultaneously, and that comes from using the coefficient of restitution. And we need to apply that also in the n direction. Okay. So the equation is this one here. So substituting values in, um, up here we're told that our uh, coefficient of restitution is 0 0.5, so that's pretty easy. These two variables on the top line are the ones we're looking for. And we had both of these written down from before, so I'll just substitute them in. And that's what we end up with. So what we can do is simplify this down. If we multiply these numbers up to the left hand side, um, we end up with this here and this becomes my second simultaneous equation that I'm going to need to use to solve. So I'm going to solve by substitution so if I rearrange this for um, Bn end up with this. So for this equation 2, this one equation 1 so I should be able to substitute equation 2 into equation 1 and solve. Okay. So I end up with... can expand it out and if you rearrange this equation you can solve for VAN um, it becomes negative 1.007 meters per second all right, so that's the normal component only of that um, uh, ball's velocity. So now we can get uh, VBN. So if we sub this value into our expression here, So the number comes out to be 5.250 meters per second. So now what we need to do is just calculate what the tangential components are. So if I scroll back up, um, I can see that I've already calculated what they are initially here and here. And what we can do is we can apply our um, momentum, conservation of momentum equation for each particle in a tangential direction. So I'm going to do that over here. Okay, so let's start with ball A. And what we know is that MAVAT has to equal MAVAT dash. So momentum before equals momentum after in the T direction. So obviously the mass of the ball doesn't change between the two different situations. So we can cancel out MA as being equal on both sides. And we know that VAT is equal to 3 sine 
45. So that means that the final velocity in the t direction, um, simplified down, becomes 2.121 meters per second. So we can do the same thing now for ball B. Okay, again the mass of the ball doesn't change before and after the impact. So these are going to cancel out on both sides. We've already simplified this down. Um, we said it was negative 12 sine 30. So this just becomes negative 6.000 meters per second. So now we know what the velocities of each of our balls are directly after the collision, but we've got them in the n and the t directions. Oops, sorry, not that one. Yeah, in here. So if I write these out um, in vector form, I'm going to have that the velocity of A is equal to negative 1.007 En for the normal component and 2.121 Et for the tangential component. And for the other one, Vb, equal to 5.250 En minus 6.000 Et in meters per second. So our challenge now is just to convert the axes. So what I'm going to do is draw out my two different axes. So I have, of course, if I scroll back up here, my nt axis off on a little bit of an angle and I have my xy axis all right so I'm just going to transfer them down here and I know from that diagram up the top that I have an angle of 20 degrees in here between my two different axes so if I were to draw these two vectors, oh sorry, these two components of my vector onto these axes, um, I have a negative n component that's going to go in the negative n direction and it's 1.007 long. This one here is positive, so it's in the positive t direction and we know it's 2.121 long. So we need to know some angles um, to make this work um, for the conversion. So one angle that I can use is this one in here. It's going to be 20 degrees because um, these are opposite and parallel lines. And I can work out that this angle in here has to be 70 degrees if I'm to maintain a right angle between y and x. And that this one has to be a 20 degree angle if I'm to maintain a right angle between t and n. All right, so they're going to be used to calculate um, what my um, components are. So... I can rewrite this as, if I start with this one here, it's going to be a negative in the x direction, so negative 2.121. It's going to be the opposite of this angle, so sine 20, and give it an i. And for the y component, it's pointing up, so it's positive, and it's going to be the cos component. So now just looking at this other component, um, we're going to have it pointing negative, in the x direction and it's going to be the cos and it's going to be also negative in the y direction in the sine component. So if you put the i's together and the j's together this just becomes negative 1.672i plus 1.649j in meters per second. And that's one of the final answers that we're looking for in this question. So now it's just a case of doing exactly the same thing, except on the other um, velocity. So we can copy out um, what our axes look like over here. And now we've just got our new components to add on to them. So this one is going to have a positive n component, so 
it's going to be pointing this way and it's 5.250 long. This one is going to be a negative t component, so it's pointing down and it's 6 long. Okay. Again, we need some angles. So this was 20 from the diagram and this here is going to have to be a 70 degree angle if we're going to maintain a right angle between our um, axes. So now it's just a case of, again, writing out what it should be in terms of those i and j unit vectors. So if we start with the 5 one, it's going to be positive in the x direction, and it's going to be the cos component, and it's also going to be positive in the y direction, and it's going to be the sine component. For the 6 one, it's going to be positive in the x direction, and negative in the y direction. So the final answer here, when you put the i's and the j's together, becomes oops, should be eight four three again in meters per second. So that's the other final answer that we're looking for in this question. All right. So that's all I've got for this one. See you in the next one.